Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Kei Hatseva. I'm a founder of Korea Pathway Institute, and we are a nonprofit organization that help internationals to move forward with their career here in the US. And I want to give a shout out to my team who is behind the scene. I'm not going to count the names because we're already like a really huge organization. And if you're interested to join our community, please take a look at the links below this video. And I just want to, I just want to mention that we are growing the numbers of in-person events here in the Bay Area. So please feel free to join our free uh, networking events uh, in April. So um, if you want to join our team, you're also very welcome to join us. So today we have our very special guest, Anna Podolska. And we're going to talk today about very interesting and very popular topic, how to pass a behavioral interview and how to pass a culture fit interview. But before going to this topic, I, I want to introduce my very special guest. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for joining us to, tonight, today. And just a quick disclaimer that the weather here in California is crazy. <laughs> so we probably will have some technical difficulties. There is like no internet no electricity at some part of the silicon valley so if we will disappear <laughs> it's not us it's the weather yeah so we decided to host this series of interviews because we know how much struggle for us as being an international it's hard to find a job it's hard to pass interviews so that's why we decided to create a series of interviews with accomplished professionals who already about this journey, who can share their experience, how it was for them, and maybe they can share very useful tips and piece of advice how to um, excel on, on these interviews. And I want to introduce Anna. Uh, she is a product manager with more than 15 years of experience in technology. And she works in different countries all around the world. And she came to the US in 2017 to pursue her dream of getting an MBA in one of the top business schools. And this school is still in my dream list. I want to talk more about it with you later when we will see each other in person. And when she started to work in 2019 um, in Silicon Valley, she decided that she also want to help internationals, well, not only internationals, uh, to women, to non-binary students, um, to get a job and she started to mentor people and be a mentee herself. So in her free time, she you can find her uh, pursuing her love of dancing, boxing, tennis, and of course, traveling. And Anna believes that staying active and maintaining a healthy work-life balance is essential to being productive and happy. And especially here in Silicon Valley where the speed is so fast, it's very important to maintain this work and life balance. So thank you so much, Anna, for joining us again. And without further ado, <laughs> let's start to the point. So maybe yeah. you can, yeah, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself. Like, tell me a little bit more about your background, what you was doing before moving um, to California. Thank you, thank you, Kate, for introducing me. Everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We will take, like, um, Kate's team will take care, and I will try to respond as much as I can. Um, my backstory, yes, I started my career a long time ago, and I have a background and degree in computer science um, back um, in Moscow. And a um, long time ago, I understood that I really wanted to um, disrupt the stereotype about women in technology. I already saw it, like from my childhood, from kindergarten, I entered mathematical school, then engineering university, and I always was like 
idea number one to show like hey girls can do this too like girls are good at this too and that's where like this idea of like being in stem statistic statistic technology economics mathematics um came to my mind but i didn't know how it, it called like compared to here in the United States. Um, and I started my career in Fortune 500 company. Like, first of all, I started in DHL in logistics in um, 2006, I think, or 2007. And then I came, uh, like after my bachelor degree, I came to Fortune 500 company. It's called Thomson Reuters, like a mm -hmm. Reuters news agency. Um, they're pretty big, like they're covering pretty much almost all world there's like uh, all offices all around the world and um, i started in um technical support uh team where i was a first lady in like starting from 1991 when this department um been created i was the first lady who came to technical support it was like a little bit something new for them um, but I really love my uh, co-workers there I learn a lot and in three and a half years um, opportunity opened to move to Germany uh, and became technical project manager and I was managing across Europe in Netherlands uh, Great Britain Sweden Finland um, and Russia as well like projects it was like fascinating time to work with the different cultures different countries travel Mm. I like talking about culture I never forget one of the emails I got from my linear manager from Great Britain uh, who mentioned to me that I'm using too many exclamation marks um, and uh, that it sounds like I'm yelling even though I just was <laughs> excited to like to communicate um, and I decided to use another strategy on one of the calls where I was completely poker face, no emotions, nothing. And I remember that my clients um, texted me like, hey, Anna, is everything okay? You are so no emotional today. Like they get used to that I'm very emotional. It's like, like it's a balance to find how to work with the, with the clients from Great Britain. Um, and my company decided that was very uh, successful department and they decided to sell it um, and um, I've been laid off, um, which is a popular topic right now, but I've been laid mm -hmm. off with a good severance package, which gave me opportunity to think what will be my next move and I decided that's time time to pursue my dream to study abroad because i finished a bachelor and a master's um, in computer engineering uh, in russia and i decided like okay united states that's that's my choice i want to try i want to be in silicon valley um i came a little bit earlier half year earlier before my program started to um uplift my english knowledge to prepare for gmat to prepare culturally you know like that was my big advantage compared to a lot of my classmates in terms of prepare for life like prepare to see what's happening even though i've been in the united states before i've been in san francisco before i moved there uh, but it's completely different when you're co coming uh, on the tourist terms and when you're coming as like an immigrant and immigrating um to the new country the same with the germany like it's a different when you're coming as a tourist and as a worker, you see a lot of hidden things uh, which you can see when you are just walking on the one tourist uh, path uh, everyone put in the guide. Um, yeah, I came to San Francisco, like I came to Boston first, then San Francisco. I started my MBA journey. It was very interesting. It was um, 120 people from 40 different countries in your class. It's a wow experience because same topics, have absolutely different point of view depends on the country like the things which um, let's say bothering you or interested for you could be absolutely not interesting from people from central america because they have another another values that were like this um, little light like this little bulb in my head like boom different cultures right like you we we've been always mixed between teams like as soon as you start get used to with your uh, team members from italy from germany from costa rica uh, from spain bam in two months you again rotated and you need to get used to, to another mm. group of people from another country um and that's how i like start thinking like when i start applying what's wrong i didn't get a single response like i got 
more than 200 rejections what's happening and that's so you started to apply for a job when you were studying still it's studying study that yeah uh, yes and i didn't locked any job when i was studying um i understood that something wrong because i started rewriting my resume at like the time i was studying i already rewrite my resume probably 50 times without like exaggerating because i started making a track of all changes mm. And I started like looking around, like going outside of the bubble with my university classmates. I started looking around and see how people talking like during the events, what I can do, like, uh, can I uh, like be useful for them? Right. Like before asking for help, you offering help. That's that's a rule. Um, and that's when I started my volunteering journey. Uh, first of all, I was a student and you want to have a free food in the evening. And when you're volunteering on those events, that's a great option. And you start meeting people because during those volunteering events, you have a uh, ability to meet very famous people as a first point of contact, right? Because people will be in the end of their talk of end of the conference, they will be staying in the line and waiting to talk with them. And you have this opportunity earlier than everyone else. Um, and they remember you. And after those events, I always drop note in LinkedIn to say, hey guys, that was amazing conference or amazing talk with ABCD speaker. I learned uh, XYZ things and people like remembering you. Uh, I do not expect that I will get the job immediately, but at least I start building my network. I start building connection with people. Yeah, like building a relationship with those people who might be useful later. Co correct, That's because I don't know anyone here. I'm a new, everything from That's the beginning. very interesting strategy. I remember that you also shared that um after each event you was doing like a photo and you was writing like a small summary after the event tag those person so for them it's like a free publicity exactly <laughs> and... so i have photos like taking picture of those speakers and posting in my linkedin and tagging them especially because they already have connection and i'm not like their mm -hmm. sub subscribers will see posts with their tag yeah so you mentioned that you started to look for a job and pass interview in while you was um, studying at the top business school here in not only in San Francisco, not only in the US, but in the world. If you want, you can mention the name of the school, but it's up to you. And I had this impression that graduates, um, they are like, a, well, in Russian, we have this expression like hot <laughs> cake. So everybody wants this. So they already taken even before uh, they graduated from the school. How it happened that it was so hard for a top business graduate um, to find a job? What, what, why do you think? Yeah, I think the biggest is um, how many people applying for a job because like a position I was looking, like let's do like a little step back. Um, mm -hmm. When I start looking for a job, one of our career advisor in university uh, help us to identify three main strategy three main questions you need to um, answer to yourself a are you ready to change location that's exactly what i did b are you ready to change your industry i said no because i want to be in technology and c are you ready to change your position and i didn't know about what's the proper name of my position because i used to be a technical project manager but in united states technical project manager at least in bay area usually means someone related to construction construction project wow. and that's absolutely not like technological thing and it took me some time to realize that it's actually a technical program manager like that's mm. the position here you need to look for um and that was some like shocking that's again cultural difference between like european market and like local market um and yeah, I, I just want to highlight this point that when you start to look for a job you need to check with people from your industry how your role is called. Just do your research. Just ask for um, like feedback, how to call myself, because your strategy, your search depends on what words you will put in your like keywords. Absolutely. Buzzwords. They call them buzzwords. Buzzword, yeah. Yes. Okay. What, what you need to put there. Um, yeah. And I started like 
talking with the people from the industry to understand what the position looks like, what is needed in United States versus like European market. Mm -hmm. And pretty much it's the same thing, but the question how you pursue and how you frame sentences like for example our uh, eastern european culture do not have um behavior of presenting um in the storytelling in the storytelling oh, yeah. we're talking with people and also we don't know how to properly structure sentences with like what have been done and what's the result of um your effort um mm -hmm. that's also something you need time to learn that's so true so i think the main difference uh, between like European culture, like East European culture, is that we are so shy. We're not used to talk, like to brag about ourselves, about our achievements. And when you're pursuing a job here in the US, you need to remember all the achievements you did, like provide some numbers, what you done well, like how you improve, how you increase something, like what you invented. So it's another storytelling. You're absolutely right. Like I'm pretty often right now, ready after four years, it's been four years ago, like four and a half years ago when I, I started my, like actually five already years ago when I started my journey, I didn't know that like we have issue and especially women, we have like issue number one, not selling enough ourselves because that's the very popular saying in the United States. You need to sell yourself. You are proud. Yeah. But do not forget that companies also selling themselves. Like they need to be like good culturally company for you, good fit. Like check their website, check their blog or social medias of those companies, right? Like do they do any efforts? Like how they respond to some hot topics which are like interesting and important for you. Maybe climate change. Maybe anything else is important for you. Maybe you want a company which which support LGBTQ rights. That's like your choice to see if you are aligned with those values. Um, and then I also understood that by selling ourselves, we have another problem as a woman in technology. We very often reading description of the company, like of the position, sorry. And then you're like, mm, okay, I only fit like maybe 60 to 70%. I'm not a good fit and we're not applying. Guys, yeah. they're reading first one, have like bachelor degree applied. <laughs> I'm totally perfect fit for this, like, which means they have higher chances. We like uh, underestimate ourselves and um, we need to remember if you have 100% um, match with the description of the role, you're overqualified. There's That's no so true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also heard such expression that uh, women apply for a job when they meet like all 100% uh, percent of the criteria and men apply for a job when they meet only like 60%. And it's also tell me that we as a woman, we tend to underestimate our underestimate ourselves and we um, rate ourselves based on our achievement, what we already done. But men, they rate themselves based on their potential. So they think, okay, I can do that. Okay, apply. Yeah. <laughs> when so, people um, for positions, I can see like how um, a woman pursue uh, like this role and how guys uh, doing during job interview and like they are presenting that they have incredible Microsoft Excel skills and I'm like, yeah, okay, it's not relevant to the job, but the way how they're talking about it, it's like fascinating. Wow, so now you're from another side, you are interviewing people, so you have experience uh, from both sides. Yeah. Okay, let's summarize a little bit. We was talking about what helped you the most along the way um, to pass the interview. And you mentioned that going for events, uh, volunteering, and also, um, what was the other one? Like storytelling. storytelling. And working with your career coach, which okay. help you to identify the questions. Yes, we have a career coach in our university. I think she helped me in the first steps like a lot to take a look into my resume and like summarize what is not a uh, fit to American market, like which words need to be used. Um, after that, we have like multiple interactions, but she helped me to identify 
what I want to do. And then she also shared with me a really good strategy of bucketing companies. Um, it's when you have already experienced bucketing companies like tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, where four, you have no idea what's this company, but the role is perfect match. Tier one, it's my dream job. I really want to be there. It's like perfectly aligned with my values. I will also mention if we're talking about the cultural fit, very important the small talk when we're networking when we're meeting people on the street like i still have sometimes issue when people bumping into me and they start like saying something like before in december someone said like merry christmas you know what i answer christmas merry because i was not ready i was like i was in my thoughts which are half in english half in my native language and i'm like i'm so lost but small talk is your key to get to know people better like in every culture we're watching some fundamental movies where we're throwing out sentence from this movie we immediately clicked because we know like oh, okay we saw the same movie from our own childhood exactly same in united states there is a um bunch of movies there's a or tv shows we're in silicon valley silicon valley big Bang theory absolutely seinfeld curb your enthusiasm friends oh, those all fun shows which are fun to watch it's uh, nice to um, have like a small talk and say like oh this situation exactly like from Seinfeld episode and then you are describing this episode you immediately clicking with people um, this is something what is necessary to show your human touch and then I always recommend before any networking events to take a look into the speakers and see their background um, be careful between stalking, stalking people, person, like being a stalker or like just to know a little bit about the background. Like I remember I once saw someone with a PhD in um, interesting topics and I came to this person and I said like, hey, that was amazing talk during the conference. I also saw that you finished PhD in this uh, and this and this theme. And I actually knew the professor um, who was a leading for this PhD work. And the person was shocked that, oh, oh my God, it's so cool that you saw it. Um, These are small things which make you connected. And then you are, do not feel shy during those networking events because people very often ask me what to talk about. Like I'm extrovert. I'm still sometimes intimidated, like, oh, what to talk about? And then I remember to myself, like, hey, you can ask people, have you been on this, like the host of the event? Have you been before on this event? Like, what do you think about speakers? Which topic you like? Or like, hey, this topic was so controversial. I am not sure that I'm agree. This kind of like linking things, helping you to, uh, it's called um, break the ice break mm -hmm. the ice with people and that's a part of cultural fit yeah that's so true and i know that when people like not that extroverted they are preparing themselves in advance so they have like a list of questions for a small talk okay today i'm gonna talk about the weather <laughs> what else i can talk about <laughs> so they just look around oh well, like about the water about the um i don't know food like anything, you just need to do a, a small homework and prepare some questions in advance you would like to ask at, at this particular event. So yep. thank you so much for this use of advice. Um, so again, let's summarize a little bit uh, what helped you to like along the way in building your uh, way to the career to pass the interviews. So you mentioned career coach uh, to that help you identify your field and um, how to call your role actually also going to the events talking to professionals who already work in this field so probably they can give you feedback uh, and more information about the company about the industry also volunteering in such professional events so if we're talking about volunteering this is my favorite topic so it doesn't mean that you can volunteer only on food kitchen uh, or any other like uh, social um, volunteering events, that also means that you can volunteer in professional field. So going to such conferences, um, events, or um, TED Talk even. <laughs> so just check opportunities. Yes, yeah, so you want to ask where to find those organization events? Which oh, let me show it. 
<laughs> definitely see that Evan uh, Evan Bright is like a good source. Um, it's always showing. Look at the advertising on the streets of like big conferences. Next week in Silicon Valley, like in San Francisco, will be uh, GDC Game Developer Conference. All of them have um, email address or even section for volunteers, which means you will have access to all events for free. Like. I think someone who went to the Svetlana mentioned that she was volunteer at TechCrunch. Exactly. Like the ticket costs from, I think, $300 up to like a couple thousand dollars, depends yeah. on how much. And it will be for free. I volunteer on Salesforce conference also, a couple hundred oh. dollars minimum. Yeah. I've been in Google office, also volunteer there for free. A lot of women in technology events. Um, it's it's a really great opportunity to meet people, uh, eat for free, and talk for free, and enter for free. Yeah, I also volunteered at some marketing event. It was fantastic. I love it so much. And also, I need to mention that Anna, <laughs> she's a great resource of all networking events here in the Bay Area. Maybe not only the Bay Area. You have an Instagram account, and you like every day you post in some like top events. What's yeah. happening? Yeah, so you, you like know everything what's going on in the area. So highly recommend to subscribe and follow uh, on um, Instagram. Okay, so let's talk about behavioral interview at the point when you realize that, okay, something is missing and probably this is behavioral interview. So what you started um, to do, like what was your move? With the behavioral interviews, I started like, literally watching people around me to see how they're talking. Um, one of the, again, Eastern European problem, for example, we are pretty often starting our conversation with words, no, which is not the best um, approach. And that's something we definitely need to work. And it's not because we're negative. It's like, it's how we grow up. It's pretty often yeah. we're saying no, but yes, that's very confusing for English speakers. Then I start watching some YouTube videos. Like I have my, mm. uh, like I have resources of like literally typing in YouTube or TikTok right now. Amazing source. Uh, I haven't watched in TikTok any funny videos. I only have some professional stuff about networking and talking and improving yourself. A lot of uh, HR people who came out of corporate, they became TikTok content creators. There's a great site, like the Muse, I think, the a really good website um, to see how people talk. And again, movies I recommend, like TV shows, are also very, very good. Like, I remember there's movies about um, finance world and there's a Silicon Valley TV show about Silicon Valley, about our laughter sweatshirts here and how people talk with each other. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great. During the behavioral interview, I always saying that there's very famous fake it till you make it. I yeah. think it's not bad, but you still should not lose yourself. Like you should be positive, but it's not fake positivity. It's just like you're really excited about the um, interview and i remember that you have one of the speakers who said that if you're nervous it's actually a good sign that means you're yeah. excited about the interview right that it's you care about it yeah it's really great um not starting not starting with no um <laughs> also using some buzzwords like collaboration uh leadership uh, responsibility, like taking responsibility, be collaborative, um, initiative, like I want to uh, I work on this initiative, then words like results, uh, I work on this initiative, like by collaborating with uh, multiple stakeholders, and as a result, we achieved like five times more um, revenue growth. It sounds nice, yeah. but just example um like this buzzwords is also very important which we again do not get like we're not get used to to, to like uh implement them in our uh, conversations and um 
I think it's important to feel the energy. And by the end of the behavioral interview or any interviews, I'm always asking myself, Anna, have you done everything to like succeed in this interview? Are you proud of yourself? If I'm saying, yeah, that was a good interview. I think I done, it's up to them to decide if we're moving forward or not. If I'm saying like, mm, okay, I have some hesitation. I don't think that I reply, like my reply for this question was good enough. Remember, it's a good example. It's a good practice for your next interview. Like, it's totally okay. It's nothing to, like, worry about if first time you have some little bumps. Yeah. So, basically, you need to be very, very attentive to your vocabulary. What kind of words you are using during the interview. And Correct. use more, like, strong business words. Um, like Correct. <laughs> Uh, Svetlana is telling ownership. <laughs> ownership, yeah. yeah. I will say that I really uh, recommend for first screening interview, behavioral interview, prepare a script because questions mm. are much similar all the time if we're not going into like your exact um, hard skills uh, or soft skills interview with a hiring manager. It's like what you're mostly proud of, what you learn from your falls and the question is to write a script for yourself. First of all, like during the screening and behavioral interview, your answer should be concise. Like you should not tell like many, many years ago when Anne was up, like, no, it's <laughs> like two, three bullet points, your achievements, um, prepare it in the script, like uh, do, it's called mock interview, like mock yeah. do a mock interview with your friends, um, ask them feedback and this will help you a lot uh, when you're going into the hard skills interview that's another story that's based on your uh, role but uh, those um behavioral interview questions are pretty much the same and when they asking you about your um bad experience it's your chance to talk about bad experience and what you learn out of this and it's how a very tricky question yeah. perform yes it's not the time to say like Oh, I have very weak memory. No, 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 no. You're saying like <laughs> that of weak memory. Like I noticed that there's so many things and like to manage all of them, I need to be structured, right? Otherwise something can slip apart. Mm. We already have questions from the audience. Sure. Um, let's read them. Tatiana is asking, what else would you highlight as weaknesses of Eastern Europeans in the US market? For example, <laughs> to <laughs> straightforwardness. <laughs> Tatiana, that's a really good question about straightforwardness. I got this feedback pretty often. Forwardness, pushy, um, that our accent could be sometimes intimidating. Um, and uh, like ability, not, not ability. When we're using not exactly proper examples for something, like we like, because we grow up on like a lot of idioms and sayings and we're trying oh, yeah. to play those sayings i'm still doing this at work and no one understands trying to translate it <laughs> yeah but no one like everyone looking at me like what what there is talking about but talking about straightforwardness and pushness again this could be a good example for your weaknesses to say like mm -hmm. i know that i could be very direct instead of straightforwardness i could be very direct but i'm trying to be empathetic with my co-workers to understand when this directness is a good or not. And that's also something like when you are talking during the behavioral interview, you can bring up, I know the straightforwardness and understand it helped me to get stuff done because yeah. sometimes we need to cut to the chase um, and like go directly to the solution. Um, pushness, like for example, I also pushy. I'm calling it, for, especially for salespeople, that's mean that you are perfect with follow-ups. Like you are, do not forget that you need to follow up on some questions. That's a really great example when being pushy, it's not a bad thing. It's like I'm getting things done. I remember that you, when we were talking before the live stream, you told me, Okay, I know about myself, I'm pushy, but this quality helps me a lot to get things done and to achieve what I want to achieve. For example, to work with the lawyers when you had your visa um, experience. Right. Yeah, so sometimes it can be really helpful quality. Yeah. And 
that's yeah, actually think- when you were asking me about sorry about the business school and the challenges why people have been uh, not selected it's actually visa visa and i'm also was in the visa situation it uh, took me a lot of time to also learn how properly talking with the hr team about my visa situation that i oh, am not can asking- you tell yeah a little bit more about this very important sure. topic I came on the F1 visa as a student and um, as a student I got also a mathematical degree here and I been um, approved for STEM which is three years after you finishing school you can work for three years it's a one year plus two years this means by the end of one you need to again resubmit papers and get two years uh, permission uh, work authorization. Um, I spoke with a lot of recruiters like no i don't need the sponsorship because i have this three years and then down the road we will figure out what to do um Mm -hmm. and with my company we also discussed this they hired me i work super hard to prove that i'm a good like i'm good employee you need me and they agreed to start working on like a next step on the working visa and they connected with me me with lawyers and that's where pushing like my pushy character is very useful because i was following up asking about dates submitting documents super fast and then like talking with my company like is it possible to do a green card it's a long process i absolutely sympathize with everyone who is on the visa um it's always about following up with the lawyers being respectful and always doing research by yourself because there's a lot of ways how to um, stay and being legal. I'm all about like being legal here. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to study in the United States. There's a lot of schools who are offering like a different type of the studies. But you need to understand that if you are on the visa, that will be a challenging moment. And just do not uh, be upset, um, but you need to prove why you as a foreigner have more chances than someone who is local. And that's our plus. We can say like, hey, I have such a great cultural background. I understand different cultures. I travel around the world. There was a very good video about like Google creating some buttons without including diverse team of people, um, Mm -hmm. engineers, uh, engineers behind this button. And like they didn't know that woman looking into another corner or people from like, Israel who are reading not from uh, right to left they're reading from uh, 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 they not le- reading from left to right they're reading from right to left and for them this is confusing when you have button on the left side and not on the right side this again your selling point like hey I have a different background I change the country, change my life, and I can understand pain points of the customers for example right like wow. the fl- um, in different direction. That's amazing. I have never thought about being international as my like selling point. As, like, it's a selling point, yes. In a lot of companies who are working internationally, you can, and that's what was during my interview. I said like I work in in Germany, I work in Russia, I work in like a lot of European countries. I know like behavior. I spoke with those people. Like I've been put on the. <laughs> project with the British clients because I know how to like work with them and how to handle proper com- communication without exclamation marks. Um, <laughs> and we which... have a great question following these cultural differences. Yeah. Uh, Anna is asking, Anna, what do you think about book Erin um, Mayer, The Culture Map? Before Culture Map, I saw that Anastasia also asked the question. Yeah, I will ask the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want me to go over the culture map or the yeah. let's start with culture map because it's for just... my for my like to sorry to shame of it like it's a shameless for me it's on my bookshelf but i still didn't read it oh i see yeah okay, I, let's discuss it next time <laughs> I have so many like things to like watch and read and like recently i think i'm fall behind because there's so much work happening that i'm only watching a few short videos and following asleep that's it that's whole my schedule <laughs> okay let's uh, move to the next question from anastasia she's asking can you give a few examples of how to answer the question why do you want to work at our company especially <laughs> <laughs> when you don't really see any particular match with their values or you just need a job that's very good. Like 
first of all, I will like really highly recommend you to think a few times. If you don't like the company, it will be a torture when you enter. Like I clearly remember when I was in the same situation, when I really need a job and I absolutely do not feel that we're a good match with this company. Um, to be honest, I think it's really two-way street. Like you can answer like, why do you want to work at the, your company? You say that you can say that, hey, I think that I can be beneficial because that's what the employer wants to see, uh, want to hear. I can be beneficial for you based on my exper expertise, based on my experience. And I think I can learn from you as well. And I can see that I can grow in this company. But keep in your mind, if you're coming to the company, which you think there's no particular match, your options like to stay in the company and start looking for something else or maybe think twice and have like different um, uh, offers from different companies where maybe salary will be a little bit less, but you feel more attached to the company. It's much better than like full mismatch in terms of what are you doing. Um, also, um, just for your resume it's always it's not always very good when you have like three months in some company and then you switch unless it's like super like we have those examples when people like get into the company and then they got incredible incredible uh, offer um and it's it's silicon valley it's okay someone can offer twice more than your current job talking about the mission and value and match to the company you mentioned at the very beginning of this live that your career coach recommend you to have four buckets like your dream company then like less important for you and fourth like mm, maybe so what would you recommend from where to start to practice those interviews should you go directly like straight from the dream companies or you need no, to no. practice a little bit i did this mistake you asked me like before and i remember yeah i did this mistake uh applying for at that time google facebook oh my god i'm looking at my resume at that time and i'm like i i think it's like already in somewhere uh trash bin because it was terrible it was absolutely not matching with ats automatic uh hr system to read like your resume like a format um mm -hmm. i will practice probably with the maybe even not with the fourth packet maybe on the third one where like mm, okay i'm it's interesting it's like matching um but do not like put on the completely ignore the fourth bucket because pretty often especially if it's your first job or you're like really need the job those companies are really desperate to get people on board the good resources and they could be very generous in terms of like money and in terms of visa sponsorship because uh, visa sponsorship in those small companies um much higher chances than in something big um that's why i will say like bucket number three it's totally fine yeah and i think i need to mention from my side that the culture in such companies the way better it's more relaxed it's more about people they care more what? about people yeah like in at least in unicorns well it, and we're not talking about funk we're talking about like big companies well established depends um, depends, depends yeah. <laughs> you're crazy and you're doing like you're uh, uh cleaning floors you are doing accounting you're doing product management everything depends what you like and it depends uh, what's the company what company is doing what's the finance situation what the series they raised or pre yeah. a series b yeah, everything depends and it's really cool to reach out to someone who is working in the company and if you're like that's a very often question about referrals never reach out to people and say hey can you give me a referral i'm usually ignoring this but if you say hey i read about your company i really like can you tell me what's your regular day looks like like what's the um, things you like, what you think you would like could be better. And that's how you start communicating with people. And 90% 90, 90 of the time, they will be very open to give you a referral because in most of the companies, people who pass successfully interviews and who've been referred, person who referral will get some money bonus. Mm -hmm. It's like interesting for everyone, but 
I'm pretty often asking, like, send me resume just to go over and see, like, yeah, okay, it's a good match. I'm happy to use my referral and refer person. Sometimes I, a couple of times, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't think it's a good fit. Um, it's actually perfectly fit into the Svetlana's question, master giving feedback in American way. Okay, yeah. to be honest, I'm still on the way to learn it because there's a, it's called a sandwich when you're saying good, bad, good. Um, I'm still on the way because, um, as someone, um, as mentioned, and Tatiana mentioned before, I could be too straightforward and saying like, okay, that was a disaster. We need to do something. And that's not the way how you need, how you're giving feedback. i still need to improve myself with giving feedback, but I see how different feedback been given to me in the different approaches, like saying like, okay, Anna this project absolutely amazing like i really like it you like nail it we need to focus on project b because there's a something you need to like work with the stakeholders or like there's a some um tension between like a different people and that's how you're smoothly going from one positive topic to another where you need um some feedback and some improvements it's all about the storytelling which we need to mastering and i'm still so true videos and that's why i'm like stand up for example also a good example mm. um very good source stand up american stand up to hear to see and hear how they're smoothly going from one topic about like cooking on the kitchen into like traveling to zimbabwe and you're like wow <laughs> I just was hearing about like washing dishes and then like traveling to Zimbabwe and I even didn't notice how like this transition change. Well, wow, that's cool. I think that it's very useful skill for any profession to master your storytelling. Like it's it can it can make a difference between where you are right now and where you want to where you want to be. Yeah. Okay, we have a lot of questions from the audience. Let's try to answer those questions. So we already see that you're super experienced in answering uh, difficult, tough questions. And Anna is asking, what's the best answer for the question? Can you describe a time when you had to deal with mm -hmm. a difficult worker or team member? And how did you handle the situation? What do I they want to hear? I like this question. The very tricky. It took me time to how properly uh, answer and, not, and how not to um overshare because i mentioned mm -hmm. in the beginning that i was the first person like first woman in very man dominated um department mm -hmm. i said that like um i like how describe time like i describing time that i noticed there is a something off again we need to use a lot of this americanized idioms americanized sentence i like i noticed that something off between me and co-worker let's say X, Y, Z without names. Um, I like decided to schedule one-on-one -on -one and like ask where in very kind way, like, hey, I feel like I, you have like such a great experience, um, but I noticing that um, there's some miscommunication. Um, and um, my stra like my strategy was to collaborate, again, use this word, collaborate with this person, uh, ask him or her to work together to shadowing that's another good word to shadowing this person to see what he or she or they like to do the most and by the end of this experiment i figure out that this person tricked by my very fast responses that i'm like responses responding super fast but without actual solution or i'm assigning tasks to this person without checking with this person if i can assign this task like you always answering the way where you highlighting how great you are like yeah it was a tough situation we have miscommunication or for example very popular your management assign your project you immediately calculate that return of investments will be very slow here or like negative, you will not get. Uh, but you said like, okay, I understood that there's been assigned to me. I decided to go with this project. We failed. And as a result, I said that that was an experience for us, how to work with the future projects that we need to set up ABCD KPIs. If we're, if we're not negative, we can proceed. Like I learn how to take responsibility and how to report to C level management and not being afraid. Like idea to present yourself from your better side. 
through like a negative experience. Yeah. So not only how you handle it, but also what you learned from the situation and what you can do better next time in order to avoid or wow, that's cool. And let's move to the culture fit. And we have an amazing question from Anastasia. What personal qualities do you think American employers are looking for in candidates in order to fit with the team? Good, very good question. Thank you so much. Um, I can tell you that by the end of the day, if you have a two candidates with amazing um, skill set, like and they're pretty much matching, um, when the debriefing happening uh, happening with a panel of people who are interviewing this person, there's a, always one important question in the air: Will you go for a coffee with this person or not? Right. Like that's mean if you are um, nice to talk with. That's why pretty often I'm asking candidates what they're doing in the free time. That's why I ask Kate, like, hey, feel free to mention that I like boxing. I used to be a professional tennis player, that I'm a real person. I have like a life outside and I'm like nice to talk with. Um, that's what quality is like qualities of like having a small talk, having like being open like right now words team player is a cliche i will yeah. not recommend to use it it's like more being collaborative i think uh also being um open-minded being um ready for changing and working in very um uh uncertain environment like especially if we're talking about silicon valley that you have high stress like high stress resistance but you yeah. like we especially if we're coming from eastern europe we definitely have high we already stress. have it <laughs> we grow up in this uh, um environment yeah, but even this. <laughs> yeah that you are ready for changes and you're open because a lot of people do not like changes and that's the qualities um employers looking like you're ready for changes you're ready for growth you are ready to learn from other people Emp empathy um again everything depends on the roles like if your role are not about talking with people and your role like analyzing spreadsheets that's mean like analyzing for like analysts in general right you're saying that um i'm ready to be independent in this role as the ic individual contributor but at the mm -hmm. same time i'm happy to explain to clarify to work collaborative with other team members those quality are really great all answers are in the job description most of the time. Uh, thanks to ChatGPT, you always can ask like, hey, ChatGPT, here's a description of my job, of the job I'm applying for. What's the main qualities they are looking for? Give me six words or like three sentences and you will see the buzzwords. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to mention uh, the appearance because right now we are talking a lot about personal qualities, about um, soft skills, hard skills. But is there any difference how you look like? What's your body language? Like I will say, okay, the look like, especially in Silicon Valley, I don't think it's a it's a different. You can look whatever you want. Smile, which we also probably like get used to not to smile a lot uh, that's how we grow up but like little smile being friendly i will say even being friendly body language um that's a good point right now because we're all online it's a little bit more difficult um in general when you're talking with people in the united states the uh distance between people it's important you need to like ha give some space to people and not coming too close um open hands like i'm sometimes doing this but it's not a good sign you need to have like an open communication uh body language i always notice when people talking with me where their hands because a lot of people mm -hmm. like hands in the pockets and then there's a two type like one when your thumb is out that's mean you are confident and another one when your thumbs are inside the pocket but those fingers outside i always know the person intimidated by me and depends on the situation like yeah i need it or like oh i need to make this person feel more comfortable and like maybe switch topics wow that's interesting i love body language yeah me too uh, we have more questions like do you have any recommendations in terms how to master storytelling 
To be honest, in terms of books, I do not think that books is like the perfect source, even though there is a one which called non-verbal, uh, non, um, non-violent communication. Mm-hmm. That's a really good book uh, by. Um, yeah, I forgot that. Um, I need to Google. Uh, it's called. Yeah, we can put the link in description later. Okay. Nonviolent communication, amazing book. In general, I will more recommend videos about storytelling. There's a great course on Udemy, great course on Coursera about storytelling. Um, a lot of Scrum trainings for Scrum professionals. They are all about storytelling and how to build those stories. Um, I think books here. Um, like classical literature, which we get used to, to read, absolutely not what helping storytelling. Kids here doing presentation from their first, second grade when we didn't, we haven't been exposed into the storytelling style. Um, I also want to look into this question I really like about TikTok with exclamation marks. Oh, incorporate. Yeah, I it. yeah, I just want to add about storytelling that sometimes classes like improv or like public speaking that can help you to think outside the box that you don't need to have scripts sometimes you just can like improvise true and yeah there's very popular core uh, there's very popular um meetups in us called toastmasters That's i don't know why they do not like um advertise themselves but toastmasters is a really good source to practice with some random people, like talking on some absolutely random topics, like how you choose meat uh, on the farmer's market. And then you yeah. hear a whole speech about meat. Um, very interesting, to be honest. Yeah. I also recommend to start to write your blog or, I don't know, Instagram page, whatever you like. Just start talking. Just you need to have this muscle to talk on any topic about the weather, about the nature, about work about anything you just need to build these muscles just start talking tell stories yeah okay let's talk uh, about tiktok i saw a tiktok about uh, exclamation marks in corporate emails it says it's not an eastern european directness it's more a gender female stereotype of women being nice to others while men don't try to please anyone that's the interesting point. it's Absolutely true. I see it in a corporate world, uh, how my colleagues creating emails and myself that I'm more excited. But to be honest, when I'm really overloaded and I have multiple, like 5 million emails, I see that sometimes my emails are very direct, very short. And I'm feeling like, oh, maybe people think that I'm thinking that I'm a little bit pissed off uh, in those emails when I'm just like writing them very fast. Um, I'm still like advocating to have your own style and maybe sometimes I'm deleting those exclamation marks, but sometimes I'm living like, like, thanks for reaching out to me, exclamation, or I hope you have a wonderful day and I'm living and then I'm putting just like um, dots in the end of the sentence. Yeah, we're different. We're um, yeah. wonderful. We need to be authentic. <laughs> yeah, what we need to show there when it's not too much. Okay, we have the last question from the audience, and I think we need to wrap up a little bit. Um, okay, shall I pretend like I'm a perfect candidate if I know I'm not? Um, difficult question. I will say at least try to like to be the good candidate when like when there's obvious question about they're asking you, hey, do you have experience in like coding and you never code in your life? Yeah, that's the way where I will highly recommend not to lie because it will come up. But if there's uh, some questions like have you experience to collect data and analyze and you can say like yeah collect data but i'm always open to learn for new tools like if they're asking you about usage with the tableau and you never use tableau but in general you know how to um, collect data i will say it's all about and i see how my um, native speaker candidates going around this I'm cutting pretty fast that, okay, this person absolutely do not have experience in this uh, area, but answer was perfect. Answer was, I am ready to learn. If needed, I'm ready to pick up the skill and learn about it. Um, It's always balanced between not lying, but also being open to learn something new. So true. And I have interesting comment from Svetlana. 
about the exclamation marks. Like I started to use GPT chat to rewrite emails in a more friendly and professional tone. So I'm using the same. Agree. Yes, for sure. That's a great source of uh, um, double checking yourself. Yeah, talking about sources like resources. Uh, what is your what are your favorite resources to learn uh, about behavioral interviews, about building successful career in the US? Maybe you can recommend something. Um, there is a, a TikTok uh, HR, like there's a few TikTok slash Instagram people. I think one, Jerry Lee, um, he has a really good advice. Um, then there's a millennial, um, it's called millennial, uh, her name is um, uh, Madeline Mann, Madeline Mann with double N in the end. She has incredible, incredible um, advices on like how to um, pass interviews. Uh, Jerry Lee, then I'm looking into some product uh, websites, like I'm looking for because I'm product manager, product mm -hmm. interviews uh, or crack product management interview. That's a really good book too. Yeah. Um, I will say TikTok when you put behavior. I just like I did this behavioral interview in TikTok. I'm looking into like how many likes and what this person is doing. That's really great resources and like benchmarks to understand um, if it will be interesting for you or not. What about more professional resources like LinkedIn? Like, is it helpful? Like Indeed, Glassdoor. I didn't find anything helpful there. I think Glassdoor and Indeed they have a few nice. Um, I think in LinkedIn they have now new option of like prepare for interview yeah. and then in LinkedIn learning portal, this is the great option. But like, again, it's not that easy to find this um, information. You need to do like some digging to find. You um, When in TikTok or in uh, YouTube, it's super easy type behavioral interview, it will pop up. In LinkedIn, you need to apply to the job and then it will suggest it to you, hey, prepare for an interview, here's the resources. Or you need to subscribe to LinkedIn Learning um, for yeah. certain of money. Or if you have LinkedIn Premium, it's coming um, for free there. Wow, we spent one hour talking about behavioral interview and about culture fit just have the last question about piece of advice to all people who are struggling with feeling into the culture in the u.s culture what would you recommend please do not give up first of all and second uh, come out of your bubble of your like people you're hanging out with explore more diverse uh, in terms of like people diverse group go to things you're interested in i know if you like dancing go to like salsa, salsa dance, dancing class even without your friends by yourself um you go you like hiking find the hiking group like facebook anything just outside of your regular culture to learn from people um and to like notice how they're talking um just like be positive like this country is amazing for a lot of opportunities it's only question to learn how to approach those opportunities that's so true and the very last question i promise <laughs> Let, let's reflect on your career journey you already built a successful career and looking back what would you do different in terms of looking for a first job in the us thank you so much i'm still i'm still building it um what I will do differently. Um, I will start like working with career coach earlier. I will uh, definitely start exploring about um, my professional industry earlier, like all those conference, talking with people, um, the position I want to be. Um, and I will start watching before even moving uh, to United States, watching more videos in English. Because for me, I remember when I was in England and I saw James Bond and I was waiting when he will start speaking uh, in Russian because that's how I used to <laughs> watch James Bond. And I fall asleep in London in the movie theater because I'm like, okay, I gave up, <laughs> shut down. <laughs> yeah, start watching movies earlier for sure. And talking about English, we have the last question from the audience. I'm curious about your thoughts about accents in English. Do you aim to sound absolutely native or do you want to keep your uniqueness? 
her keep your uniqueness everyone love it uh it's about learning how to pronounce things correctly uh where in the california people have million accents when i'm traveling into midwest or like some states in the middle of united states that's where it becomes struggle but in general it's uh, um i'm personally like to a little bit smooth accent and it's like blended right now you can hear my accent but still there's like people starting getting confused um I'm about like learning and hearing and asking your best friends to like, hey, if you heard some mistake, please give me a sign, like tell me what need to be pronounced in a different way. I'm I'm trying not to be absolutely offended, except like when people pointing out this, uh, like in front of everyone, but like just in the small company, I think it's nice when someone tell you. I, for many years I was pronouncing watermelon not correctly. I was saying watermelon. I don't know why. Because I don't know why I'm also pronouncing watermelon. <laughs> I don't want. No, I know it's watermelon. <laughs> yeah, it says watermelon. Well, thank you so much. We have so many great feedbacks from the audience, and again, thank you so much, Anna, for joining us tonight and sharing your amazing experience and so many helpful pieces of advice and insights, and. If you will have more questions, can we drop them in the comment section and you will reply them later? Yeah, I'm open, happy to uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can follow my page on LinkedIn, you, my Instagram, Anna P. Shares. Uh, yeah, also, we will put the links in the description. Sounds, okay. I'm offering some consulting too, like uh, if you would like to meet in person, um, or online, there's a, some consulting work also could be offered. Yeah, meet in person in San Francisco, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, thank you so much for watching us live and spending, spending this hour together. And obviously it's not possible to answer all the questions and Anna offered her, her help. And we'll host more videos like those every thursday at 6 p.m pst time so please be sure that you subscribe on our channel and if you find this video useful give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends with your audience with people who are looking for their first job and who want to ace behavioral interview and cultural feed so thank you once again and see you soon bye 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 thanks